Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about spider mites. They've been a bit of the bane of my existence for the past almost a year now. I think I got them for the first time about a year ago that I know of. I could have gotten them before. They're kind of hard to detect. But I've recently been battling some spider mites on a few plants of mine and so I thought I would go through what I've done and kind of like the whole overview of what spider mites are, how to treat them, how to prevent them, all that good stuff. So that's what we're gonna do today. If you don't know me already, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you are interested in following along with my houseplant journey and want to learn something about houseplants along the way, stick around, watch more of my videos, and subscribe to my channel. So right, let's get into the spider mite information. <laughs> spider mites are one of the most common and most disruptive houseplant pests. And if you notice them on your plants, you're probably gonna wanna get rid of them ASAP because they can kind of get out of hand very, very quickly. Spider mites are tiny, tiny, tiny little bugs, like half a millimeter in size. Frickin' at tiny little bugs. I mean, I think they're actually more closely related to arachnids and spiders than insects because they've got eight legs. They're part of the mite family, I believe, um, hence the name. <laughs> but they are tiny, like, so, so tiny. You can almost only see them with a magnifying glass unless you really, really know what you're looking for. And they're typically like translucent or like a reddish brownish color. And basically they like to suck the sap out of your plant's leaves, slowly killing them. <laughs> this is why they're best to be avoided. But they will create these tiny little webs on your plants, um, both for protection and to kind of get around your plant and just slowly murder it. Spider mites go through four stages of life cycle, egg, larvae, nymph, and adult. And that cycle can actually go pretty quick from egg to adult in like ideal conditions, like very hot, dry environment. They, that can be as fast as like five to seven days Typically in a home environment, it'll probably be up to 19 days, but you'll often find that there are many, many generations of spider mites on your plants at once because an adult can lay for 50 to 100 eggs in their adult life. And so there's almost always new eggs hatching and like maturing and laying more eggs. And it, it's just a problem that can absolutely spiral out of control. So that's why you want to catch it as soon as possible and you're probably gonna have to treat multiple times. There are a few different ways you can like spot spider mites, symptoms you might call them, and probably the most noticeable one is the webbing that they put out onto the, usually the underside of your leaves. That's where they like to congregate a bit more, and again, why they're slightly less noticeable, um, but that sort of characteristic webbing Luckily, I've not had an infestation so, so bad that the webbing has been super duper duper obvious, which means I think that I've caught things early enough, but it's still been not ideal <laughs> and something that you want to get rid of quickly. Other symptoms include like yellowing splotching of the leaves, sort of like stippling almost, and that is just where the spider mites are slowly sucking the sap out of different points in the leaf slowly consuming it. So because they are so small, you probably won't be able to see them very well with your naked eye if you don't know what you're looking for. So like I said, it's highly recommended to get a sort of magnifying glass if you're gonna have a lot of houseplants because it definitely helps to see them. But if you don't have one and you're looking at the underside of the leaves, if you just like notice tiny little spots moving around on the leaf, it's probably spider mites, unfortunately. But I have a couple clips that I tried to film with a magnifying glass in front of my phone camera because it can get slightly better close-up macro images than my camera camera. So here's some attempted footage of the spider mites on my new Aspidistra Erladior variegata. I know, it's really sad. It had spider mites, the one I got from my friend. But 
here's some footage. I'm using it as a tool, so it's okay. It'll all work out in the end. Spider mites can come through like nearly anything. They are so freaking small that they can fit through like mesh screens on open windows and doors. So that's something to be aware of if you've got mesh screens. They can get into your house. Mental, right? Uh, they're also probably more commonly coming in on plants that have been infected whether before you've bought them or plants that you've summered outside and you're bringing in. So it's really, really, really important to double check on those plants before you bring them into your home and add them to your collection. They can also come into your home on like flowers or vegetables you bring in from your garden. So make sure that you wash all of like your home grown produce. And that's actually why I don't really get flowers anymore. As much as I like the way they look, I just get so nervous buying flowers because I've seen them come in with pests before and I just don't need to add that to my collection. I do not need to risk it. So I tend not to buy like fresh flowers for that reason because I'm too scared of getting things like spider mites. <laughs> and it's okay, my houseplants are fine. They do the job of having life in my home rather than flowers. Treatment of spider mites can be somewhat difficult as you have to repeat the process over and over again because there are so many generations of spider mite on your plant at once. The likelihood of you killing them all in one fell swoop is quite unlikely. So you have to keep repeating the process over and over for a little while. The first thing you need to do when you notice spider mites is isolate your plants get them away from any other plants in your collection because spider mites can easily spread between plants that are close by each other. So like if I had spider mites in the cabinet, I'd probably have spider mites on everything in the cabinet. So if you notice spider mites on one plant in your zone, you should thoroughly check other plants in that area just to make sure that they aren't also infected. If you have any highly infested areas on your plant, probably the best bet is to prune those leaves off and dispose of them immediately and then wash your hands in case the spider mites have gotten on your hands. It's just easier to just cut off the like main source of the problem rather than trying to get them to go away. Unless your plant only has one or two leaves, then I understand not wanting to prune them off. But if you can afford to prune a bit, it's probably one of the easiest ways to actually get rid of them. And then after that, you want to hose or like shower down your plant very thoroughly, making sure you spray off the tops and the bottoms of the leaves. Try and knock everything off at, like that you possibly can. Do be careful though. You want to make sure you're not overwatering the plant as you do this. And you wanna ideally try not to wash the spider mites into the soil of your plant because then it just becomes harder to get them off later. So just be careful when you're like rinsing leaves to not water the soil too much. After you let that drip dry a little bit, you have a few different options on how you can like start solving the problem. The first option is something like miticide. I personally have used SB plant invigorator and that can be used as a fairly general pest repellent as well and you want to either mix up your solution of that or spray the solution you already have thoroughly over the entire plant until it's like dripping off the plant and then let that dry. You want to repeat that every two to three days if you've got a fairly heavy infestation or like once a week for lighter infestations but either way you're gonna need to repeat it until you notice that there are no more spider mites on your plant. The most natural option is probably using a sort of neem oil solution to like get the bugs off your plant. Spraying that on your plant will kind of smother any spider mites that are living there. And Nemo is also kind of a general pest repellent because it kind of reacts with the chemicals in the mite's brain when it consumes it. And it kind of, from my understanding, it gets them to stop feeding because it doesn't allow them to eat anymore and so slowly they just die off which is great for us. I wouldn't use like straight up neem oil though. You want to not use it neat. I would ideally make a solution or buy one. I've had some cold pressed neem oil that I got 
literally years ago during my great fungus gnat battle, which has gone away, but like I'm still dealing with in there. Um, but separate things, we're not talking about fungus gnats, we're talking about spider mites. But you can buy cold pressed neem oil concentrate and make up your own solution. The recipe that I use is one and a half teaspoons of cold pressed neem oil, one teaspoon of horticultural soap, liquid soap. You can use like dishwashing soap as long as it's not like super harsh chemically. And then a liter of warm water. Warm water is kind of important because it helps the neem oil melt a little bit. It is an oil after all. And then the soap also helps it kind of blend all together. Once you've mixed them together and you put it in a spray bottle, you want to shake it very thoroughly because you want the oil to like blend in and use that to spray your plants. And again, you're going to want to repeat this probably weekly in order to get the spider mite population on your plant down. One method that I found really, really worked for my plants, especially the Aspidistra that I'm dealing with now, is using isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. It can be a little bit harsh on your plants, so if you are worried about your plant's leaves not reacting to it well, do a test leaf first. Just like when you're dyeing your hair, you can do a test strand to make sure your hair doesn't fall out. You're trying to make sure that the leaf doesn't just fall out. <laughs> but either way, you want to be making a solution of the isopropyl alcohol, again, not using it neat. For more sensitive plants, I'd use a ratio of one part alcohol to three parts water. But for hardier plants, like the Aspidistra cast iron plant, it's called that for a reason. It is hardy as F. You can use a one to one ratio of alcohol to water. And so far, I don't think I've had any issues with mine doing that. I've had a few spots of yellowing, but I think that's more because of overwatering and stress of the move of the plant rather than the spider mites and the treatments that I've been giving it. You can do this in a spray like you would with the neem oil or the SB invigorator, but personally I found it worked really well to like use a soft sponge or cloth and soak it in the alcohol solution and thoroughly go through and wipe the tops and bottoms and stems of all of the leaves on my plant. That way I could go through and like systematically check and make sure that the alcohol is really getting into all different parts of the plant to really get those spider mites gone. You probably want to repeat this as well once a week or so until the problem has gone away. But so far I think that's the best method I've had for this plant and I've I've done it twice now, I think, and so far, I think they're doing pretty well. I think almost all, if not all, the spider mites are gone. If you don't really want to go the spraying things on my plant sort of route, you can go for predatory mites. I have done an entire video on predatory mites, so if you're interested in finding out like more detailed information about them, go check that out. But basically, predatory mites feed on spider mites, their larvae, their eggs, and slowly control the problem that way. You can get them in little sachets or in bottles, depending on the size of your issue, and those will basically slowly release the predatory mites that just consume the spider mite population. You want to replace the sachets probably four to six weeks because they are a living thing, so eventually they will stop coming out of the bag, especially if there are no more spider mites to eat. If you are still suffering with the infestation after four to six weeks, repeat the process, buy a few more sachets, and put them on your plants. One thing to note is if you are using the sachet method, you want to wait at least two weeks after using any sort of chemical insecticides or miticides because those will also kill the predatory mites. So you can't really use them in conjunction with each other. It's kind of an either or situation. The best way to avoid spider mites in general is prevention. It's so much easier to prevent spider mites from joining your collection than it is to get rid of them. The most important thing is to just generally be cautious 
any new plants that you're bringing into your collection, whether you're buying them or you're bringing them in from outside, you want to thoroughly check them over and probably isolate them for at least a week, keeping an eye on them to make sure that they've not got any sort of pests. I know that's hard, I'm definitely someone who just adds plants straight to my collection sometimes, which isn't the best thing to do, it is generally best to keep them alone and quarantine them for a little while just to make sure that they are not spreading anything bad to the rest of your plants. And that's true of all pests, because all pests can spread through plants touching. So for the sake of all of your plants and not wanting spider mice, don't let them mix right away. It's also really important to dust your leaves to prevent spider mites, not only because when your leaves are dusty they kind of look like how spider mites look to the naked eye, or there could be cobwebs on them which could be mistaken as spider mites and vice versa. So really do keep your plant's leaves dusted if at all possible because that'll just make it easier to notice if there's a problem. Also, when you're going around dusting your leaves, you can be checking them as well to make sure that you're not getting any pests like spider mites. About every month or so, or going into a new season like spring, summer, fall, autumn, winter, spring, summer, fall, autumn, and winter, all five seasons. Um, at the start of a new season, give your plants a good spray with your neem oil spray or SB invigorator or something like that as a sort of preventatory measure. That can be really good at keeping your plants fresh. Also hosing them off every now and then will again prevent dust and make it easier to notice the spider mites on your plant. You should also try and keep your environment fairly humid if possible, especially with the tropical plants. One, they're gonna love it anyways, and two, spider mites don't really deal with humidity, so if your house tends to be particularly dry, that can cause spider mites to, one, like, grow faster, but also be more attracted to your environment. So try and keep your environment as humid as you can, obviously without making your house moldy, but keep it humid if at all possible. You can also use predatory mites for prevention. I have started doing that now. I've recently, since I've finished doing the isopropyl alcohol treatments on my Aspidistra, I've put some spider mite preventative predatory mites sachets on that plant and all of the other plants that I got from my friend and they're isolated in the corner of my office because I want to make sure that even if I haven't gotten everything with the isopropyl alcohol that little predatory mites can do their job and make sure that there's nothing there and prevent future ones from popping up as well. Overall just be cautious. Be aware, keep an eye out, pay attention to your plants because that's the best way that you can find the problem early and get it treated fast. Because the sooner you spot a spider mite problem, the easier it is to get rid of it. So really just be cautious and keep an eye on your plants. So that is it. That is pretty much everything you're gonna need to know about spider mites and how to get rid of them. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you are experiencing spider mite issues, that this can help you get rid of them fast. Oh, yeah, they're such a pain, aren't they? Yeah, I hope this video helps. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so, so much for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other house plenty things that would, you would like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.